So, I said earlier that we hadn't heard the last from our three brand CEOs from Dassault System. And indeed, we're going to hear from them now. But we're also going to be setting them a challenge at the end of their segment. They don't know it. Let's see how they handle it. So, welcome back, Morgan, Stefan, and Guillaume. <laughs> So, um, you know, I heard during my research uh, the word digital twin, and then I also heard you guys saying virtual twin experience. Is it the same thing? No, it is not the same thing. Of course, also they are related. A digital twin is a 3D representation of a product on which you can project data from the past or current data. A virtual twin experience extends and improves the digital twin. Not only by enabling to understand what happened or what is happening, but also by enabling to navigate the multiple features. Indeed, because the virtual twin experience has built in the behavioral capabilities, the realistic behavior of, of the system, you can actually do what if scenario and imagine multiple future and imagine the impact of any decision you're going to take. So understand the past, understand what's happening now, and navigate the future. So it's kind of alive. In a way, I think it's a, but you know, a virtual twin experience contains actually more information than the physical object or, or system it does represent. It contains actually how it should behave, uh, how it has been uh, produced, how it has been engineered actually, on why, on many other things. If you take, uh, if you take uh, a digital uh, twin, which is actually a repository of uh, incomplete uh, digitized information, actually it inherits from those inconsistencies. So no, it's a bit like a, a boat, you know. Uh, if, you are, uh, if, you are, uh, if you are going a, a tiny degree off road, you can end up at the end at a very different location from where you were intending to go. In the same spirit, you could also compare a, a digital twin to a high resolution picture of the product, then you assemble all of the data you want about that data, you have a win. If you do that, everyone has a common understanding of what's happening. That's very good. But that will never help you understand the impact of any of the decision you might take. It will, ne it will never help you model the future. Actually, you know, you can think about it as virtual twin experiences project you into the future in very much the same way scientific does do. You know, when you're a scientist, you, you want to uh, understand a phenomenon or predict a phenomenon, you take a model. You fuel it with data that characterize the stage in which, in which you are. You run it, and then you have the answer. You know that uh, you're going to have a tide in one day, a tide in two days, etc. And you know the, the hours of the tide. And if you change location, you update, and, and then you have it. Well, virtual twin experience of manufacturing, in that case, is exactly the same. Tell us, or tell the virtual twin experience, or the virtual twin, uh, what are the inventories? What are the planning? Which resource do you take? Where is the supply chain? Bang, you know tomorrow, in a month, in a week, in a year, where you're going to be. And if things change, update, run it again. So it's a time machine. It's really a time machine. And it's a little like science fiction, as far as I can work out. No, it's not science fiction. It is based on science. So it's science fact. It's science fact, absolutely. And it's a reality, by the way, already all over the world for many manufacturing and operation. So can you give us an example? Uh, you're slightly English, right? Yes, I am English. I, I didn't want to be insulting. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just, just, just. Uh, so I think your country went into some kind of trouble uh, a few years, a few uh, weeks back with yeah. with with, uh, with gas. the fuel crisis. Yeah. yeah, fuel crisis. What happened, right? Well, there was some kind of a rush in stations where where gas was missing. People get crazy and panicking, and then then the crisis got harder and harder. Um, there is two ways to get out of this. The first one is a bad way. You know, panic strikes all over the place. Yeah, and, and you send the trucks with fuel or gas wherever you know, the people shout the most and, and, and chaos add to chaos, and it's a, it's, it's a nightmare. The other way is you have a model of your supply chain. You know where the boats are coming because there is not that many 
harbor, right? Uh, and you have characterized the demand and you know how much fuel is consumed in all the, in, in all the, the geos and the regions. And then you orchestrate uh, the, 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 the replenishment of those stations. So maybe you don't have quite enough, but at least you, you put what you have where it's most, uh, most uh, needed and you can communicate because you have a plan, you have a vision. And tomorrow you can tell more and tomorrow you can tell more and you're going to get out of it. By the way, I don't really know which is the road that the British government took, but, you know, I'll, I'll let you tell so, us. So it's really something that can really make a big difference in tragic situations like that. Uh, but the solutions are really uh, only as good as the data that you get, right? So that's a fair, a fair comment or a fair question. Uh, you know, the adage, uh, garbage in, garbage out, is a reality. But you know what? If we look at uh, what happens at our customers, they are sitting under a, um, a terrible or an extraordinary patrimony of data. So the data is not missing. The challenge, however, is these data are coming from a very large variety of sources. So it's bringing it together, condensing it, Abs accessing it. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly the point. It might be in different language. Uh, it might be different format. It might be structured. It might be unstructured. It might be text. Uh, it might be numbers. It might be 3D. So the challenge, as you just said, is how do you connect these data in a consistent manner so you can interpret it and, and, and more importantly, you can avoid to misinterpret it. So to achieve that, we have developed a data infrastructure technology which actually allows to connect the whole of that data and elevate it into what we call an ontology, which is um, a smart representation of the world. And by, by applying the whole of that data into this ontology, we can make it available to anyone in a contextual and consistent manner. But if you forget about all of the complexity of what I just said, the only thing that you need to remember is we can connect all of these data and we can make it consistent and re relevant for any user in the context of what they're doing to make sure they're always empowered to take the most relevant decision. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, you're really, a, it's all about empowering businesses to make better choices. Absolutely. Very much so, Paul. Actually, this is really the case. And actually, I mean, all of us, we are on constant pressure to really get more capacity and more output from the same resources. So now again, we have seen with those examples how the virtual twin experience really helps you to improve, optimize every aspect of your business. The quality of your robots, uh, optimizing your production system, logistics. And all those improvements are definitely delivering big and tangible results. But you know, I think that at the end, the biggest gap between the actual output and performance and I would say the, uh, the, uh, the optimal one is really about the people, about the people. Those are scarce and very uh, uh, talented uh, and resources. And, um, and, and, and very often, a lot of them actually are not working, I would say, as efficiently as uh, they should do. And at the end, you know, it's really, uh, in many cases, up to us as leaders mm. to really provide them with the right information at the right time to take the right decision are also enabling the right collaboration, interactions among them. And this is really, this is really what, what we do uh, with uh, uh, our uh, solutions uh, and that really uh, uh, can really transform, uh, transform the value there for, for, for the clients. So it's really about uh, uh, breaking the silos across vertical and sometimes rigid organization, create those connections, reveal talents, and all those is also uh, delivering direct uh, impact, I would say, on the, on the bottom line. But more than that, you know, with this, you are creating a more uh, enjoyable uh, way of working. Uh, you know, uh, people are really efficient. They don't have to look for more information. And they feel empowered. That's the thing. And they feel empowered. So at the end, you are really building a, a greater place, a more desirable place to work. And actually, in the current war of talents, I think it's a critical asset for all our organizations. So, so in fact, the virtual twin ends up impacting a lot of the areas of your business. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I mean, and you know, if, if, if I want to sum it up uh, very briefly, I mean, I, right on the top of my head, you know, three areas would come into my mind. The first one is going to help you going faster. Right, so uh, what we call lead time in manufacturing, right? The time in all areas, you know, in the manufacturing sectors, that is, you know, from the product uh, beginning or you know the first thought, the insights to the manufacturing and bringing the product to the market. And why? Because you can model everything. You're going to model uh, the way the product will be built. You're going to model the way the supply chain will be actionated. So, so, so at the end of the day, no mistakes when you hit the shop floor. No need to stop the shop. No, you know. 
just right on, right first time. So lead time is the first one. The second one is efficiency. I mean, uh, Stefan mentioned it uh, uh, very, very clearly. Um, we're going to orchestrate everything according to the plan we have devised and simulated and validated. Therefore, you're going to have the right people at the right time on the right machine with the right software, with the right tool, with the right certification. You know, everything is flowing seamlessly, right? So you, you eliminate all waste. You know, in, in manufacturing, we are very much against waste, you know, and, in, in, and, and, uh, and that will bring you efficiency. And the last time is because you are going to do things right first time, because you are going to follow exactly the plan, you're going to deliver on time and in quality. Right, which is ultimately what our clients are expecting from, from all the industrial community. So lead time, efficiency, on-time delivery, those are the three key values that, that, that those types of approach will provide. Okay, look, I really think this is fantastic and I really love it, but I want to see what it looks like in practice. So we're going to give you a challenge. In five minutes, you've got to come up with something that's actionable and that is doable in five minutes, okay? So bring in the screens. <laughs> we are in trouble, guys. We're You're in trouble. in trouble. Big trouble. Hey, what's it for us? We, if we meet the challenge, what well, is for us? If you meet the challenge, then I'll, I don't know, I'll, I'll take you out for a meal. Hey, we are French. That's going to cost you a bundle. Okay, oh, come oh, on, guys. Oh, Let's oh, go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs>
So I just need now to, uh, to work with my team to understand where I can store uh, the hydrogen here. So let me, uh, let me get to, uh, to my team. Uh, this is there our coloration board, the same team. Guys, are you awake? Are you connected? So okay. brainstorm. Let's brainstorm. share information. Questions. Please, what do we need to do to make that happen? Okay, quick, uh, quick. On my side. And the so they're already putting in suggestions. Yeah. And you're already putting in your suggestion for the restaurant, I can see. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, those are the important things. So uh, we're going to do the brainstorm, and right away I can actually have a look at uh, the actions. That the are, actions. That, okay. Okay. And Let's I can go position the actions. the actions, send it back to my Communicate friends. Communicate it to the team. This is all about maximizing collaboration, Stephen, right? I can see yes. it. I can see I take over. I take over. I can see it. We have a task. We need to have a plan. Right. No? A plan. We take it. Let's put that in the plan. Easy. The plan is really about people, actions, timeline, clear milestone. The team is there, the same team again. And we have all the content available, again, for the team to work on one source of truth. Wow. So let's make it. OK, let's do it. I have the plan. I have the 3D now. You know, I see the space. I can certainly start looking at where I can store my hydrogen. Wow. Let's make a simulation. OK. And actually, I'll go right So it's away. all going to be backstage. You're going to put a wall in there. I'm going to exactly do that. And, and look, I can bring, bring the hydrogen in the here. Lift. I have the security of the wall. I have the, the opening Charging of the doors. Charging up the hydrogen, Fine. OK, and My bang. only problem is I still have some space here. So I asked my team in, you know, in the mass time to tell me where, where, uh, how we could optimize the set. And I think we can optimize the set like this. And I have a surprise for you, my friend. Oh. Because you know, I removed your desk. Thank you very much. That's so kind. And what am I going to do? Where am I going to be? There's a, there's a tiny little stage now. There's hydrogen everywhere. And you will be in a nice bucket. Oh, thank you so much. And you've done it with 10 seconds to spare. OK. So we made it. You made it. You okay, made right, it. Right. So, so, Paul, Good. Paul. Yes. L'épicure. Oh. Épicure. OK. L'épicure is fine. Your choice. Your choice. Uh, uh, I'm going to look at the menu, <laughs> see how much they are, and then I'll tell you. <laughs> So there we go, a very fitting way to end our show. But before we leave you, I've asked our three brand CEOs to give us their final takeaways. Morgan. This whole show has been about bringing quality information to our audience. And that's my takeaway. The secret to being a better manufacturer, a better business in the decade to come is in being better at delivering relevant, traceable, and trustable information to your employee and leaders in the right context at the right time for them to be assisted and guiding in doing a better job and making the best decisions. Stefan? Yes, Paul, I think that this show underlines that you can have the nicest set, the best equipment, but what you focus on, what you remember, are the guests. And it is the same, actually, for your business. The better your people perform by themselves and as a team, the better will be your results. So we need to be using data and technology to empower them and make them the best they can be. And the last one, who's the least? Guillaume. Well, I would like to echo the spirit of, of, of Bernard's uh, segments and underline the fact that we, uh, the manufacturing community, are here to make it happen. The virtual twin approach uh, should and will allow us and you to maximize the effectiveness of our data, are the effectiveness of our teams, and that obviously so that we can contribute to building an even better world in the future. So a perfect note on which to end. Thank you, everyone.